everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, I wasn't even sure I was going to cover all this DC drama because it's pretty dramatic. In fact, it's, I think, some of the, the most dramatic, aggressive stuff we've seen yet. It really is already approaching, I think, Snyder Cut levels. Uh, but then this morning, I had an epiphany and I could see the last two days spread out before me. And I was like, oh, there is a story here. I think there is something worth mapping out because I think it's really interesting. Uh, so thank you very much for joining for today's live stream. Uh, you can say a comment or a super comment if you want while I'm talking, but I'm going to really try to stick to my, my comments. And then at the end of the stream, you can ask me anything that you would like for the final 10 minutes, uh, just so you know. But I really want to stay on topic because I think this is really interesting. I've got the graphics. I'm all ready to go. Uh, this has been, it's really interesting because it's been just uh, two crazy two days, just uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And I, I took a day to cover it because again, I wasn't sure if I was going to cover it, but then also I wanted to let it breathe. I wanted to have perspective. You know, I really, you know, I would love for DC to work out. Seeing all the franchises take big hits right now is not fun for any of us uh, to see that lack of interest. So that's, that's really unfortunate. So I would love to see DC do wonderful. Uh, and they had a really bad week overall. I just want to touch on Rachel Zegler, who went on the red carpet for Shazam. And when they asked her why she did, why she did, uh, went to, and did the movie, she said it's because she needed a job. And, you know, sure, she was honest. And I know that some of her fans were like, oh, yeah, good for her. She was honest. But it makes the franchise look like absolute crap. And I think that it would make producers and studios start to wonder, what will she say about my movie, right? I would be very concerned about that. Uh, Nacho said she pulled a Jenna Ortega. I think that's interesting. I don't think that Rachel Zegler is successful enough to pull a Jenna Ortega. Jenna Ortega is so hot right now, she can say anything she wants. Uh, but I think even Jenna Ortega is maybe giving some people some pause. Uh, but that was really bad. I think that social media is pushing uh, a narrative of like, you know, transparency. And transparency is important. You know, you never want to hide bad behavior because, uh, you know, fans are, fans are demanding. They're like, oh, we want to know what's going on. Speak your truth. But you have to remember this is show business. And as I've told you before, it's a good rule in life to make sure that people feel they can say stuff to you, both positive and constructive, uh, without you going and, and saying it to other people. Uh, don't put yourself in that position. You know, when you are promoting something, I think that, you know, there's a long list of talent that has been negative on their stuff and it hasn't turned out well for them. You should always be like, oh, well, you, you, know, I, you know, it's not that hard to say, oh, uh, superhero movies are so popular and I was excited to work with uh, David F. Sandberg. I thought the first movie was really endearing. You know, what? And to be with Helen Mirren, I mean, there's so much stuff you can say without, you know, maybe, you know, if she is embarrassed to be in the film, uh, you know, she doesn't have to, to give it away. That's right, Just Josh, be diplomatic, be diplomatic. Somebody needs more media training. Uh, all right, so I've been, th you know, the, something else that occurred to me over the past few days was that, and I have said, you know, you, you know, Heather just mentioned Dwayne Johnson and Henry Cavill. I've said every single person who joins DC comes to regret it. I've never seen someone regret it as quickly as Dwayne Johnson did. But I think the, I think the curse so far continues. I think the curse so far continues. It's really weird. Uh, but uh, I was looking at what happened to uh, how James Gunn has been behaving and what's happening to him over the past few days. And I was like, you know, he's really a combination of Jeff Johns and Zack Snyder. How odd is that? That's who they picked to take over. It's like they want a certain type of person to run DC. Uh, I think he's a little bit like Jeff Johns in the looking out for himself aspects. And I think some of the... Well, you know, I think I'll leave you to make the other connections yourself. Uh, I don't want to say anything outrightly bad about anybody, so I'm trying to be very diplomatic here. And I think that, you know, he's a little bit like Zack Snyder in the way he handles himself uh, politically. You know, and I don't mean like politics like Republicans and Democrats. I'm talking about the politics of business and how he handles himself within Hollywood. Uh, creatives, I continue to feel, do not make good suits. Although Kathleen Kennedy's not a creative and she was a horrible Star Wars suit and continues to be. 
But you know, that's because Filoni and Favreau have really taken over there. And even they're struggling right now. But anyway, creatives don't make a good suit unless they're willing to stop being creatives. Uh, Kevin Feige has always been a producer. He's never wanted to be anything but a producer. And I feel that um, that has helped Marvel to a degree. Even he's having serious problems right now. Uh, I think the biggest problem for uh, James Gunn is Twitter. Uh, I think he has a very Elon Musk quality to the way he handles himself. And Elon Musk, by the way, still has strong supporters. And I think James Gunn always will as well. But it's, you know, I don't see why anyone would look at what Elon Musk is doing and be like, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and I think that, you know, some of you, some fans are not helping <laughs> by bringing every little thing to James Gunn attention. Some of you are tweeting this stream to him. It's like, just let the guy, let the guy cook. Leave him in peace. He doesn't know, have to know about every single thing. I mean, I don't mind if you send the stream to him, but it's like you guys bring every little thing and every little news story to him, uh, and it must be driving him crazy. I heard he's on Twitter, like, all the time. I heard he's a huge Twitter fan. He's on it constantly. Uh, and you guys just shouldn't add him on everything, you know? I mean, you're demanding, because he set a dangerous precedent for debunking, and now every story that comes out, you guys are like, is this true, James Gunn? And I think it really, you know, he shouldn't have done that to himself, but it puts the, 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 the honest or whatever, you know, whatever the word is on him to respond now. And I think that that's really a, a difficult situation. I think what James Gunn should do is stay off Twitter. You know, people, I mean, how, Kevin Feige never tweets. You know, when you talk to, you know, when you talk to uh, Kevin Feige at conventions and, you know, it seems more special because of that. I would also caution Gunn about overexposure. Uh, which is a problem. So he should stay the heck off Twitter. He needs to hire other directors and writers as soon as possible. As soon as humanly possible, he needs to get other people on the DC bench. And then he needs to make a great Superman movie. That's what he needs to do. Uh, it's really important to make a great Superman movie. Like, whoa. Like, I could not, and I think he's very focused on that right now, which is maybe why they aren't hiring a lot of other directors and writers. I mean, Peter Safran is supposedly co running this thing. But, I mean, who the heck knows where he is? He's on the Shazam red carpet. He was on the Shazam red carpet. He produced both Shazam movies. He produced Aquaman and Aquaman 2. But uh, he doesn't seem to be doing anything. Maybe he's crazy, like a, smart like a fox. And he's like, I'm not involved with this. What are you talking about? Uh, let's see here. Alex? Oh, yes, you're right. My Twitter handle is cut off. Oh, I'll fix it another time. You guys know what my name is. I'll fix it for the next one. Uh, all right, so pretty interesting. I think that's what Gunn needs to do. But let's talk about all this drama. Let's talk about all this drama. All right, so Wednesday. It started just on Wednesday. Just on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, here we go. I've got the, I've got the visuals. Zack Snyder kicked off the day early by putting out a tease that said, incoming transmission from Dark Side. Lord Darkseid saved the date April 28th through the 30th, which is a Friday through a Saturday. And I couldn't believe some of the headlines that ran off of this from responsible publications, not just fans. And I saw one website say, oh, Zack Snyder teases a Darkseid project for April 28th through the 30th. I mean, you really think there's going to be a three-day Darkseid project? What would that be? And here's the thing. It's obviously SnyderCon. Uh, SnyderCon 2023. And SnyderCon isn't even new. SnyderCon has been held before, okay? So it's not even like, oh, well, who would guess SnyderCon? SnyderCon is something that has a precedent. So it's obviously SnyderCon. And it makes sense that it would be Friday to Sunday, Friday to Sunday. Now, he's going to be airing previous DC films, uh, Man of Steel, uh, Batman v Superman, and the Zack Snyder's Justice League cut. Uh, and Darkseid is involved in those movies, which is why he said that, I believe. And he needs Warner Brothers permission to air those films, to run those films uh, professionally. I, I heard that Warner Brothers is helping him to, to show those films in a really exciting, great way, to make SnyderCon really cool. And the reason SnyderCon Con is so vital, besides the great work that Zack Snyder is raising money for suicide awareness because of his daughter, uh, was because, you know... Um, what does full, full circle mean? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. But I've heard from two different sources that Zack Snyder does not have any new DC projects coming up. Two sources said nothing new from him for DC. Uh, he'll, I'm sure he'll explain full circle, you know? 
But I think that Rebel, maybe Rebel Moon somehow is coming full circle. But make no mistake, I think it's very, 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 the odds are extremely strong that this will be a launch point for Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon comes out in December. I think that Zach's going to start trying to build up the interest in that. Army of the Dead got a huge boost from coming out around the same time as the Snyder Cut. And I think it's crucial that, you know, I think he wants to transition and hold on to his fandom. Uh, Ilya, for those of you who don't know, Rebel Moon is his, basically his version of Star Wars, which is releasing on Netflix at the end of the year. And he wants to make a whole Rebel Moon franchise. So, you know, he, just like with um, uh, Army of the Dead. So he, he needs to keep his fandom engaged. And right now, the best way he's been able to do that is with DC. Uh, now, the reason Warner Brothers is willing to help him is because I heard that Zack Snyder, I'm not, I don't want to give away too much. I don't want to ruin SnyderCon. I know they have surprises planned for you and some cool stuff. They're going to have panels. Uh, but uh, I think that he's going to, I've heard, kind of give his blessing for the new DC. Uh, you know, get Snyder fans off of guns back. I don't think that will work, quite frankly. I think that might just anger some of his fans against him. So we'll see. We'll see how, how it goes over. Uh, as for Zack and Warner Brothers, uh, with other projects, that could happen. Uh, Warner Brothers was his home for quite some time, as you might recall. He made a lot of movies for Warner Brothers. He made almost all of his movies for Warner Brothers. Uh, I don't know if reconciliation is possible after the way things got so contentious during the Snyder Cut situation, like so bad. So, so bad. There's so much stuff you don't know. So I don't really know if reconciliation is possible, but if he seems to be getting along with Warner Brothers to a degree, you know, maybe then he could work with another studio. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he's very happy at Netflix, but I think, you know, you want to be able to have every door open to you, or at least, you know, more than just Netflix. Uh, I can tell you that he's getting along very well with James Gunn. As uh, Alon pointed out, they are old friends. They both got their big break together. Dawn of the Dead, Zack Snyder's first studio picture, was co-written by James Gunn. There's a picture of them on the red carpet. So they've know, known each other for a very long time. I think they have very similar sensibility. They're very similar type of guys. And I, so I think they're getting along. And from what I've heard, they are getting along very, very well. Uh, and, you know, I think you're going to be surprised at how well along they're getting. But not to the point where James Gunn wants to hire Zack Snyder, because I think James Gunn is like, now it's my turn to be Zack Snyder. Which is why, later in the very same day, on Wednesday afternoon, that's when James Gunn pro chose to officially announce that he was directing Superman Legacy. Now, it didn't trend. Let's put that up. Hold on, I got the visuals. Hold on, here it is. Oh, no, that's not the one I want. Uh, there it is. Okay. So there's his tweet. He said, uh, yeah, I'm officially directing Superman. It didn't trend because Tom King had already leaked it the weekend, the week before. So everybody already knew. Uh, and he didn't really have any particular new information. So, but he, some people felt that he did that to undercut the Snyder announcement. And I feel it wasn't malicious. I think it was just more of a, a personality thing, let's say, where I think James Gunn's like, you know, because I think a lot of people were speculating that Zack Snyder was going to do something with DC. And I think James Gunn wanted to remind all of you that he is Mr. DC now. Uh, and I think that that's kind of what was happening there. I think that that's, this, that's really what it was. Um, you know, I think DC made Zack Snyder a household name. Uh, and DC's not big enough for the two of them. And I think, uh, you know, Gunn is like, now it's my turn. And don't forget, Zack Snyder also started off with the Superman story. And now James Gunn is starting off with the Superman story. I mean, it's a little single white female, but, you know, I mean, it's interesting. It's really interesting. And on that note, you know, Zack Snyder had a very, very heartbreaking story about his family that coincided with Justice League because he had a family tragedy. And I thought it was a little bit odd that James Gunn also put a family tragedy, the death of his father, and decided to associate with his, it with his Superman movie. It was just a weird t uh, take, and it was a weird twist that he forgot his father's birthday. I don't think you wouldn't forget a relative's birthday, especially if they were as close as James Gunn said that he was. And then I don't know why he had to, I don't know why he didn't mention this in January when they, um, when they announced when they announced the Superman release date, you know, you would have been like, I mean, when you're saying the date out loud, you, I mean, sometimes people might forget what day it is, you know, when the actual day comes. I mean, who hasn't, who hasn't forgotten what day it is, right? But I mean, when you're saying the day out loud, you would be like, oh, wait a minute. I've said that day out loud my whole life because it's, it's my dad's birthday. And then also, I don't know why he needed to say he forgot. I don't know why he couldn't have just said, oh, my brother and I it's, think it's really great. 
And so I, it's just, it was like, it was so many layers and twists and, you know, unnecessarily so. And then again, when you think about the personal aspect to, you know, it seems like it's mirroring Zach's very personal and very real. I know that was very, you know, this is real too, but it is like a little bit weird. It's very similar. It's extremely similar. Uh, so when he announced all that, let me get rid, my, clear my notes so I can see what I have here. I thought it was very interesting that Variety ran this tweet. The headline was, James Gunn hires himself for Superman Legacy. And some people pointed out that that was very aggressive of Variety. And it was, even though it's true, it was very aggressive. But let me remind you that Variety is the trade that James Gunn called out for being a liar when they said he was considering trying to loop in the Reeves-verse. Remember that he called out that reporter and he said, I love the guy, but he needs new sources because he's totally full of crap? Well, Variety, and Variety never responded to that. Variety remembered. Variety remembered. And I said at the time, why on earth would you want to make an enemy of the trades? And here's the result. A very snarky headline. Uh, from Variety, uh, they did not rescind, even though some people called them out on it. So I think that's fascinating. Uh, all right, so uh, he did hire himself. It's true. I think he really needs to hire other people. I think it's extremely, extremely important at this point, outside of the writer's room, because so far every single individual person who's been hired for an individual project is gone. He's writing Creature Commandos, he's writing Superman, he's directing Superman. Not a single other person has been hired, and he needs to hire someone immediately. So and that's how the day ended on Wednesday, and it seemed like James Gunn, for the most part, was still going strong. But then Thursday came around, and it was so bad. Uh, Lloyd Variety is part of a bigger company and other publications. All the trades are owned by the same company. Variety, Hollywood Reporter, and Deadline are all owned by the exact same company. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting because a Vera Hollywood reporter got him the very next day when you come to think of it. I thought it was going to be like, you know, just the v editors at Variety were ticked off. But when you, now that you bring that up, who, 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 who was crazy on, uh, on Thursday? Where is it? Hold on. Where, oh, yeah. So that's the Hollywood reporter image there. And there's the quote from, uh, from Ben Affleck, right? So they hit him the very next day, the Hollywood reporter. They hit him very very hard. It was the hardest I think that James Gunn's ever been hit yet so far. So uh, Ben Affleck was doing an interview on the cover of Hollywood Reporter for his upcoming movie Air about Nike. So uh, that's right, Polk. Uh, there are the people working on the Waller series, but because they aren't talking about the Waller series, and because the Waller series is an extension of Peacemaker, the only people to survive the Great Purge I think it's not quite working to the same degree. Although you're right, Poke, that's true. Uh, to be fair, to be fair. So Air is the Nike movie that Ben Affleck is uh, directing. So he did this gorgeous cover story, very candid. He had a lot of very interesting things to say, in fact, about his time at the Grammys, about his marriage to Jennifer Lopez, about addiction and the stigma that it carries even after you've, you've uh, gone, you know, you've, you've, you've kicked the habit. I thought it was a really good interview. It was a very interesting interview. But the interviewer, said, hey, are you going to direct a DC project? Because James Gunn had said, oh, Ben Affleck not only is going to direct something, but he is eager to direct. He really wants to direct. He really, 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 really wants to direct. That's what James Gunn had tweeted uh, a couple of, uh, you know, back in, when was that? In December, okay, when he was clearing the slate. And he was on his nobody's been fired tour. <laughs> when we were like, but they have been fired. And he's like, no, no. They've not been fired. But Ben Affleck said, uh, I'm, no, I would, I, would n uh, I would not direct something. Ab and he said, absolutely not. That's where it gets really bad, OK? Because some of you have said, maybe it just didn't work out. Maybe they did have the meeting that James Gunn said they had, and then they decided not to. Like, James Gunn never should have answered Jeff. He should have just ignored Jeff's question, OK? But for some reason, he decided to answer Jeff's question. So if, if, if that, Ben Affleck could have said, yes, at one point I did want to direct, but I decided it wasn't for me. Or we couldn't find a project that I liked. He didn't even say, I met with James Gunn. He didn't say that. I mean, he did say he thought he was a nice, he had nothing against him. Nice guy, right? Because I think, you know, he doesn't want to, I think, you know, he's being very diplomatic. But I think he wanted to shut down this rumor that James Gunn started that he wanted to direct a movie. 
And that clearly seems to like not be, be true, right? I think he wanted to shut that down. Also, I don't think he did the flash any favors by saying um, he's only in the flash for five minutes. Uh, but he did say overall that he did not like, uh, Ben Affleck did say overall that he didn't care for superhero movies in general. Uh, and he didn't like the superhero movie machine. He doesn't like the blockbuster machine. But he didn't clarify that. He didn't clarify that. He said specifically that he didn't want to be involved in Guns DC. That was aggressive. Uh, and I think it really just shut down James Gunn's tweet. Because, uh, again, as I said, he could have clarified and said, we met, it just didn't work out. So it was pretty bad. It was a very bad thing. And James Gunn did not comment on it, which I feel is the right thing to do. Just let that story die. Don't give it oxygen. Uh, but I think he was really upset because later in the day, he stepped in a big time when he again answered yet another tweet about his wife. I don't know why this guy can't stop it. He should never stop looking at the replies, man. Okay, so I think this was a huge mistake. So then later in the day, someone said, stop putting your wife in every DC project, okay? And uh, I just realized his wife is on that, is on the is on that reply. So that's pretty bad, okay? Like, I understand that that probably touched a nerve, especially because Ben Affleck had delivered such a horrible blow in the morning, right? So James Gunn was having a really bad day. And then he sees someone tweet this to not only him, but his wife as well. And the reason that was tweeted is because Jennifer Holland is at the end of Shazam 2, right? Now, I can tell you, thank goodness, she, from what I've heard, as of now, she's not in The Flash or Aquaman 2. And I don't know if, she, I didn't, for, I forgot to ask my sources if she's in Blue Beetle. But yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not great. It's not great. Uh, but so he tweeted this and he said, you know, the only DC movie I've ever cast my wife in was The Suicide Squad. I had nothing to do with the casting of any other movie. Anything else was shot a year or so ago while I was deep in volume three. What he means about Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Uh, and then he says, but I know some of you are deeply in need of reasons to hate. Well, I don't know. I think this was kind of aggressive, you know? I don't think you needed to at James Gunn on this. And I, don't th I think you should have left his wife off of it, quite frankly. Uh, if you're going to go there, at least take his wife off of there. I mean, come on. Like, give, give the man a break. Uh, but uh, you don't cast a character in every movie. I think this is a loophole. Because she's technically not cast in these other movies. But who is making the decision to reuse her? Who decided to put her in the uh, in so much in, in Black Adam? Who decided to use her for the end credit sequence in the end of Shazam 2? And also, he decided to bring the character back for Peacemaker, as Heather just said. Who wrote Peacemaker? James Gunn. He decided to make his wife, his wife's character, not only in that, but the female lead. That is very aggressive. So yes, he did not technically cast her in Peacemaker because she was already cast. So I guess someone should say, stop deciding to, you know, I get that person didn't say cast. They said, uh, to be fair, the tweet did not say cast. So James Gunn is cherry picking words, you know, that I think help him make the point that he wants to make. You know, David Zaslav, James Gunn, very twisty, very twisty in the words that they pick. That's why I said, pay attention to what they do, not what they say. So here's, so I have to say, I saw the end credits. She's, uh, she's Harcourt, for those of you who don't know, Lloyd Lester. She's Agent Harcourt. Uh, so for those of you, you know, who did not, I'll just say, I'm not going to ruin the end credit scene for Shazam, but as Tammy just said, I thought she was fine. I wouldn't go so far as to say she was great, but she was certainly fine. You know, I didn't think she stood out as like, why is this lady in here? You know, if you didn't know that she was James Gunn's wife, you wouldn't question why she was cast. You would be just like, oh, it's the lady from Peacemaker. Uh, I think the big problem is that she had no career prior to being dating and marrying James Gunn. And I think that it's like, you know, I think it's, I don't even want to go into it that much because that's really not great. Uh, but it's not great. Uh, I think to, to level up like that, it, you know, and she had like no credits, like not even like a struggling actress, you know, and I think the few credits that she did have were kind of like sketchy. Uh, and she wasn't even like a writer or something, right? So it's like, I, I feel like, you know, that's the bigger problem. If his wife had had an acting career beforehand, I don't think this would be as big an issue. And also it's kind of where the Peter Safran puts his wife in all the movies that he produces. So you have two guys 
putting their wives in all the DC projects. It's, and you know, every, it's, this isn't just against them. It's, I don't know if you watch Real Housewives of, uh, of Beverly Hills, but uh, Diana has this, this husband that she married, this boy toy, who is an aspiring singer. And she makes him sing on the show. And someone tweeted and said, I didn't marry this guy. Why do I have to listen to him sing? And I think it was hilarious. And we all thought it was hilarious. Like everybody who saw that tweet was like, that's how we all felt. That's how we all felt when we were, um, when we were watching Real Housewives. So I think to some degree, when we see these guys' wives, you know, you'll never see Peter Safran's wife because she's always like a super extra, you know, like really, like really in the background. She was like the, the one with all the, the, the uh, like the, um, she was like a, the, the uh, Frank Lloyd Wright villain in, in, um, in Suicide Squad, right? So anyway, uh, that's how I think we kind of feel when we see these actresses on screen. We're like, we didn't marry them. Why do we have to keep watching them? So I think that's, the, that's where the negative situation comes in. And I, I think especially post Me Too, it's very weird that that's how like kind of women are, you know, I don't, you don't see that happening with a lot of guys, right? I mean, I guess it's who's in charge, but you know, you would, you know, we, we act, acting roles should go to the best candidate. So I feel that's important. Um, so yeah, so it's pretty, it's a, it's, a, it's a weird situation. And I know that some of you have come to like Jennifer Holland's work. As told by Alex said that he enjoyed Jennifer Holland on Peacemaker. So um, I think that it would be better again if she weren't the female lead, you know? I think that would be helpful. Also, she has no other work. No one else is casting her in something. Just like James Gunn needs to hire somebody else, he, you know, he needs like, somebody legit needs to hire Jennifer Holland. Not, and not a family friend. Like, she needs to audition for other work. I mean, she seems to be just fine only working in James Gunn's stuff, too, which is also kind of weird. Like, why isn't she auditioning and trying to be in other projects? And then I think people would be like, oh, well, that's... And, you know, it's funny, Dev, you brought up Melissa McCarthy's husband, but you're right. We're all like, we don't want to see this guy. Get him out of here. That's a perfect example to switch the genders. Thank you, Dev. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect to switch it around like that. It's exactly like Melissa McCarthy and her husband, who we all feel is ruining her career. And every time we see him we're now, we're like, why is he here? We didn't marry him. So it's the exact same situation, and I think it's not good. Uh, so I think the other problem is, is that Warner Brothers let him cast her. Warner Brothers should have said, you can't cast somebody who doesn't have any background. You know, she has not acted in anything else. Tell her to go get some other acting gigs and then maybe we can consider it. There, I think Warner Brothers should have said, it's a bad look for us to let you cast your wife. Uh, and I think that Warner Brothers is like, it's all trickling down from the way the people who work there are handling things. You know, they do some sketchy stuff. Other people do sketchy stuff. You know, there's supposed to be a very strong professional tone. And I do think that the fandom interaction is creating a pressure cooker situation where people are like, you know, the people who work there are like, oh my God, I just can't take it. and I'm being roasted like crazy online. Again, put down the phone, man. Don't go on Twitter. How, I mean, a lot of celebrities, by the way, won't go on Twitter. They have their publicists handle it for them and just kind of give them an update as to what's going on so they understand. That's really how most people handle it. They do not go on Twitter. They don't go on social media. They keep the account and they have their team run it for them. If you don't know this, in fact, because this I thought this was very interesting. The way most social media accounts are run is that they're planned about a month in advance. They plan the photos or they have an idea of what they're going to do. And then the celebrity will supply some ideas and some photos to the social media team. And the social media team puts that out there and monitors the reaction in the tweet. You know, that's why it still seems very personal, but that's actually how it's handled. So I think that that would be a good way to do it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's creating a lot of pressure and it's getting so crazy that it's spilling into other studios and franchises at this point. You're starting to see it in other spaces too. It's really, it's very tough. You know, Stephen, it's interesting that you bring up Sean Gunn because I don't think anybody had a problem with him casting Sean Gunn, his brother. And that's right, Sean Gunn was Kirk on Gilmore Girls because he had other work. And also his brother had such a small role. If he cast his brother as one of the main guardians of the galaxy, I guess his brother eventually got there. But at that point, I think his brother had earned it. But yeah, I think like, uh, you know, it would be like if he cast his brother as Drax, right? Or Rocket Raccoon. And you'd be like, what? That's not cool. 
So I think, you know, and you know, James Gunn, just everybody he casts is a friend. And I feel like that's a really dangerous game to play. Like uh, the uh, uh, Economos, Steve Agee, has been in um, James Gunn's work for years. Johnny says, happy wife, happy life. But no, I don't think, no, I don't, th- I don't agree. I don't agree with that. That's not, that's not a, that doesn't work when your wife is in your business. If that's just for your personal life, quite frankly. Doc says, hey, Grace, love your content. James Gunn brought it upon himself by not opting for a complete reboot. Totally agree. Totally agree. All right, let's get to the Q&A section now. You can ask. I've gone through. That's, I've mapped it all out. Uh, his brother does do the mocap for Rocket Raccoon, but he doesn't do the voice. So Bradley Cooper is widely, widely uh, considered to be Rocket Raccoon. Uh, hey, Dancing Dog 60. Thank you again for being very generous. All right, so you can ask me anything you want. It's 102. Ah, I went through that pretty good. So we'll do like about 15 minutes of questions, I think. Uh, So I think that's good. Uh, Let's see here. Ah, thank you, Neil. That's a very kind thing to say. 80s Model says, I really liked uh, Jennifer Holland on Peacemaker. Uh, but I understand the nepotism. Yeah, I mean, you just have to be more aware of it. You know, I think James Gunn was just so focused on kind of making his wife a star that he didn't think about, pretend, you know, you got to play devil's advocate on these things. Uh, that's why you have a team. The team is supposed to say, okay, all right, they go, all right, James, oh, that's great that you want to do this. We love Jennifer too. But let's think about how we can best launch Jennifer so this is successful for everyone. That's how you're supposed to do this stuff. Christopher Welsh says, I can't believe nobody has mentioned the terrible optics of McCarthy's Ursula taking a, a young uh, black girl's voice and image and using them against her. Uh, well, I think that nobody wants to play that card, Christopher, because then, then it would be a mistake to have changed the Ariel role, and obviously that's not. I think, I think Halle Bailey looks like she's you know, hopefully going to do a really good job. So I think that, that is, uh, and let's try and keep it, Christopher, to DC, James Gunn, Ben Affleck questions, please. Uh, let's see here. Johnny says, AMC or Regal? Have you been to Alamo Draft House? I go to both those theaters. I'm a little bit more partial to AMC just because I'm not around a lot of Regals. And I do have, I, I think I let my Regal mem- unlimited lapse, but I still am an AMC Stubbs member. And I've never been to an Alamo Draft House. They have one in Manhattan that I kind of wanted to go to, but then COVID hit and it's like in the basement and I'm a little worried about ventilation. So I'm not really into that. Jonathan says, new management, same old drama. As a fan of all DCEU movies, I'm just going to re- revel in the fact that we get to see Trinity cameos one last time before the reboot. That's true. Uh, let's see. And you know what? Maybe Superman will be good. Maybe it'll be good. Kim says, I just think the gun gives very trauma vibes and can't get away from that goo. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about that. I think he's very trauma y. CJ says, this is a mess. Uh, Christopher says, Grace, you called it. The partial reboot is a living nightmare. Seems to be just spiraling out of control. Yeah, thank you. And we haven't even had a single movie yet. Logan says, I don't think DC needs any origins anymore. We should just jump into an established Justice League uh, like the animated series or Injustice games to be different from Marvel. I agree. I don't need to see these people meet each other for the first time anymore. Although I would like to see Robert Pattinson's Batman meet. I've, I still feel it would have been best to build off of Robert pa- uh, Matt Reeves's and Robert Pattinson's Batman. Matt Reeves won't let anyone do that, which is a real shame. I think they just should have taken a break, quite frankly. I would have just taken a break. They shouldn't even try to do anything with DC. They should have just done the Batman 2 and Joker 2 and then probably sold the whole thing to Universal and let them start again. T.J. Williams, Amelia Harcourt was a character made up entirely by James Gunn for his wife. Uh, Media Lover says, how do you think Shazam will do over the weekend? I think it's going to be bad. I think it's going to be bad, which is too bad. Ah, thanks, Recognize Justy. Says, Grace, I'm so happy you're not piling onto the hate and said trying to come from neutral ground. I think that's important. I think that's important. I don't want to hate. I hate that hate stuff. Uh, Although people, some people regard saying anything negative whatsoever as hate, and that's ridiculous. Because then, you know, if, if, you're, if compliments are, if you give everything a compliment, it loses all its value. I don't know. I used to know someone who was really nice. Uh, and then one day I realized he was nice to every single person that he met and that his niceness meant nothing. And, you know, I mean, not that you shouldn't be kind, 
But like he acted like everyone's best friend as soon as he met them. And it just then, when you realize that he did that to every single person that he met, it came across, I felt, as really disingenuous. I was like, oh, so you just want to be best friends with everyone that you meet. You are not actually thinking about the person as an individual. And I, I think that's important. Uh, we see says predicting the Shazam 2 box office. Well, I think last the trades had it at 35. So I think it's going to be really low. Alexander Wilson says Denzel just joined Gladiator 2. Denzel is in Denzel Washington? That's amazing. Let me see if that's true. He did. Ah, oh, that's great. That's going to be great for that movie. That's going to be great for that movie. I'm so happy. Looked like it was just going to be a lot of Irish dudes for a moment. Uh, Mika, I did see the new Gal Gadot Wonder Woman statue on the Warner Brothers lot. I was confused as to why Patty Jenkins was there. <laughs> I'm like, Patty Jenkins, what, you fired? You know, Gal Gadot wasn't there for the unveiling, so the whole thing was super awkward. And then why doesn't she have her sword? I'm very upset she doesn't have her sword. Uh, BNH says, hey, Grace, apparently J Meryl Streep is in talks to star as Pauline, Pauline Kale and Quentin Tarantino is the movie critic. I have not heard of that, but that is perfect casting, and that automatically makes that movie the most amazing thing ever made. I'm excited. I appreciated some of these silly jokes that were made about it in regards to me, so thank you for that. <laughs> this is very silly. Very silly. Hold on, I'm going back. Thank you, Witness Protection. Da, da, da. Oh, look, Clint Black gifted five uh, memberships. That's so kind of you. Jennifer, I haven't heard any DC casting tea. I told you that they had, you know, they might not have hired a casting director, but the breakdown and who they're looking for is out. You know, um, I know a number of people who've seen that. Uh, Nicholas Carr, oh, let me go back. Let me see if I didn't miss anything. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Really skipped ahead on me here. Jeez. Okay, there we go. DL says, good afternoon, Grace. Do you think that Shazam will do better than Black Adam? I'm not sure. I think Shazam's going to come in real low. I was sad about the Rotten Tomatoes score for Shazam because it's actually a really solid movie. It's a family movie. You have to understand that to appreciate it. But I thought that, you know, critics, I think, I think critics are out for blood for all superhero movies now. All superhero movies should be worried about their Rotten Tomatoes score at this point, in my opinion. Justin Tyler says, Grace, did you see the Gaga Joker 2 set photos? I didn't see her in any costume. I saw her walking around on set. And I thought she looked phenomenal, but I didn't see her in a costume or else I would have made a video. Uh, Ice Rhino, I have not heard about the second, of the fourth Amando runtime. I'm not quite sure where people are getting these runtimes because they don't release it uh, early to press anymore. I'm so sorry my breakdown was late. I'm going to have to make sure I get up at 6 a.m. To, to break down these things. Uh, Elon says, thanks for the breakdown, Grace. Excellent as always. Ah, thanks. I'm so glad you feel that way. Oh, look, Rodolfo says, I love my Cinemark. I went to Cinemark in Pittsburgh. Mwah. Beautiful. Great experience. I was like, Cinemark is a great chain. Mary Rose says, oh, that's a great Lisa Simpson. I love that picture of Lisa. Who do you think James Gunn will should hire to write direct the other projects on the new DC slate? Well, there was a rumor that he was going to hire Drew Goddard, who's in his writer's room. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. He's sitting right there. So as long as he doesn't hire Christina Hodson to write anything, I'll be really happy. Uh, stay away from Tom King and Christina Hodson. I don't know how they're even in that room, but just contain them to it. But Drew Goddard, I think, is talented. So I think he's a good choice. I'd like him. James Mangold has expressed interest in Swamp Thing. I wouldn't do Swamp Thing, but I guess if you're going to, I think James Mangold's a good choice. Uh, and let's see who else that they pick. I would think that I would have him not pick his friends. If he just goes around and hires his friends, it's going to be really bad. He needs to hire people. He's like, I've never met them before, but I've been a fan of their work. And he should hire one woman. He has a woman doing Waller, again, to be fair, as Polk pointed out. But he should hire another uh, woman to do the Wonder Woman show. Hi, Lena. Lena's a super Wonder Woman fan. Thank you, Lena. Uh, Oh, let's see here. Devin Henderson says, Grace, how much drama do you think a brand like DC can take? How long before the general public starts to associate DC with drama above good stories? Well, it's complicated because people loved the Batman and Joker and people liked the first Shazam. I'm not sure why everybody turned on this one. Um, I think that's survivable. I think it's survivable. I think people respond to good content. And so all they have to do is start putting out good content. And so I think you can, they can turn it around. 
Sufjan, I did see the set photos of William and Kate in The Crown Season 6. I thought they looked great. I wonder how honest they'll be about their relationship. Uh, let's just say, I think Kate Middleton's a lovely woman, and I think she's wonderful, but they did not like, it wasn't like they didn't fall in love immediately. Nicholas Cardillo says, if Discovery DC is out of money, him doing most of the work is cheaper, right? Uh, his, his, is he getting the pay of usual? Yeah, I don't know why you guys think that they save any money. There's no pay. Maybe because James Gunn isn't a superstar, but I think he kind of is a superstar director. Is, he's cheaper because of his scandals? Maybe, but they don't save any money hiring him. He is paying himself. I'm sure he is getting millions of dollars for these gigs, as he should. You have to get paid for your work. And I, I'm not, I don't think that that's wrong to pay him. Uh, I think it's a little weird to hire himself and get them, you know, it's just, it's very similar to when Jeff Johns was saying, hey, adapt all my storylines in the comics, because that meant that he would get, he would get paid for that because they were using, you know, you're supposed to get a little bit of a paid because if they're using your stuff as source material. And then also that propels sales of the trades. So J uh, Jeff Johns would get a cut of those sales as well. So it's a little sketchy, uh, but he doesn't say that Warner Brothers Discovery doesn't save any money hiring James Gunn. Mr. Magic says, hi, Grace. Dying for a shout out on the live. Hey, Mr. Magic, shout out to you. Thanks for the hearts. Oh, uh, hey, Jennifer. Jennifer oh, I already answered Jennifer on that. Clint, I got you there. Uh, Kledgy said, Grace said, uh, Ben said something about Justice League reshoots being awful. Yeah, I think it's pretty well known right now that that Joss Whedon stuff was a real horror show. Uh, Eli Mason says, oh, why is Gal Gadot in Shazam if she's being recast in Gunn's new DC universe? I don't understand Gunn's logic here. I think they didn't want to cut her, to be honest with you. Uh, I think that she was already in it, and I think that they just decided to keep it. Uh, uh, Schlock, yes, I am going to do a Shazam 2 spoiler review. I'm going to film it right after this, but then I'm going out to watch the parade because it's St. Patrick's Day. So I apologize about that. You know, I really wanted to go to that Ted Lasso event on Wednesday evening, but it just totally messed up my schedule. So next week, I'm with spoiler reviews. I'm going to get back on time so they go up on Thursday evenings like they're supposed to. I really apologize about that, but Shazam will go up tomorrow. Juan Gabriel says, Hi, Grace. Me and my friends laughed out loud when Gunn's wife showed up at the Black, on Black Adam because the build-up to the scene was big and it was just her. Yeah, I will say I wanted it to be Amanda Waller. I was like, I want to see more Amanda Waller. Uh, I am excited about the Waller show for that reason. Lena says, Grace, do you think Gunn will keep Gal as Wonder Woman? I don't. And I got to tell you, having seen her in the latest Shazam movie, there's no reason to. Uh, let's see here. Faisal says, uh, I think Wonder Woman 1984 just did way too much damage. Faisal uh, says, hi, Grace. The last time Meryl Streep was nominated for an Oscar was in 2018 for The Post. Do you think she'll be ever nominated again or possibly win her fourth? Uh, I think that she will. I think she will be nominated again, unfortunately, because the female category is often very hard to fill because they still struggle to come up with great female roles, which is sad. Uh, but so I think Meryl Streep at some point will get back in there, probably for this Quentin Tarantino movie if she's cast. Uh, and I think she could win for that. That sounds like a great role. Uh, Stu, Stu said that you, you did my Batman watch along recently. Oh, that's so great. I'm glad you were, I'm glad those stay up and you were able to enjoy it. Batman's a great movie. Welm says, when will the apathy for DC films end? What's it going to take? I admit even I have fallen into it. I don't care about the Flash, Shazam, haven't even seen Black Adam. Well, let's see if this gun stuff looks good. I think that'll be a big thing. Draft Pick says, if gun Superman flops, will Warner Brothers do the same to gun like they did to Snyder? Any chance Cavill will stay in the Flash movie? Now, I've heard he's been cut from that film. Um, he might show up like in like the time warp sequence, but he's been cut from the end. Uh, they, don't, they don't want that film to make any promises because they're not going to deliver on them. Because, uh, you know, Walter Hamato, you were, you were kind of getting Walter Hamato to do it, but now, no. Um, I think that if Gunn's Superman flops, I, I think that's going to be right around the time they're probably going to be selling the whole Warner Brothers to somebody else, and it'll be somebody else's problem. Um, oh, Charlie, I hope you do see Shazam. It's a fun movie. I really thought it was surprisingly good. Jojo Bell says, if Gunn uh, just puts out a good movie, I'll be happy. Just wish he would work on it and stop replying to every tweet. I agree. Someone should take his phone away from him and be like, no. Uh, let's see here. Hector, I didn't meet Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> 
Dev says, Grace, any tea on the uh, next Universal IP Radio Silence is working on next? Thanks for working so hard and carry the film news. Oh, that's very kind of you to say, Dev. But I, I have to say, I, I, after that nice compliment, I have not heard anything about Radio Silence is doing over at Universal. Uh, let's see here. Trisha says, hey, Grace, watching from Westchester Airport, going to Disney World. Oh, Trisha, have fun. I'm so jealous. I hope you have a wonderful time. Let's see here. Thomas says, how do you compare the box office compared to Scream 6, which I loved the potential box office for Shazam? Weren't they similar budgets? I think Shazam was a little bit more. I don't think Sh Scream 6 cost $100 million, But uh, I don't think that Shazam is going to do as well as Creed 3 or S Scream 6, which is unfortunate. Uh, let's see here. Alan says, every project announced seems so gun. I can't see him want to give up anything or not be the writer for most of them. Yeah, I agree, Alan. He says it's not going to have his flavor, but so far it seems to have his flavor very much so. Like he picked all of his favorite stuff rather than maybe what's best for the brand or what fans want to see. If he just puts Brainiac in a Superman movie, I think that'll be great. Tammy says, Shazam question, agree or disagree? Helen Mirren reading the bird letter, funniest moment. It was hilarious. I put that in my spoiler review. She did a great job with that. And I'm not going to say anything else because I don't want to spoil it. It was hilarious. Nathan says, uh, James Gold is falling into, uh, James Mangold is falling into, the, into James Gunn's Twitter problem as well as Indy 5. Is he really? I haven't seen any of his tweets like that. Just stay, don't get, don't get sucked into that, man. Just, you, it's, you know, you'll never win. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Alwatch says, what can we expect on April 12th from Warner Brothers Discovery and DC? Uh, you mean, what's April 12th? I forgot. Is that like, uh, it's like either, is it like the, the upfront presentation or, you know, I think that must be the upfronts, right? We'll see. I mean, I don't know. Warner Brothers brought it last time, so I'm going to pay more attention to their announcements now. In the past, they've been dry, but they really stepped up their game with their last earnings call. So I'm like, I better, I better pay attention to that. Let's see here. Hold on one second. One second. Okay, let's see here. 80s Model says, Grace, do you think the media would have a field day in case Gunn's Superman flops, especially because he is the co-CEO? Well, I think that's a huge story if it flops. I don't think it's like anything against him personally. I think he set it up to be a big story if it flops because he took full ownership of it. So it would be a, a tremendous story. Uh, let's see here. Lloyd Lester points out that Shazam made 3.7 million opening night. That's way lower than Scream and Creed, which did five point something opening night. So it's already considerably lower. Raymond says, do you think the flash will be big? Feels promising. I think that it'll be big because of Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck's in it, you know, for five minutes, but I think that'll be bigger than Shazam, but I don't know how big Shazam two is a good movie. It's really crazy that it's doing so poorly. Let's see here. Logan says, Alamo is a theater for movie lovers. You should, you should for sure give it a shot when you can. Well, I, but also I don't want to eat during the movie. And I don't like, although I do like they keep people from talking. Trisha says, when are we getting a secret invasion trailer? I heard it would be in uh, this month or April. It's coming up. It's got to be soon. I heard the show was going to debut in May. Although, let's see. They haven't announced it yet. They're probably really freaking out about how low Mando's viewership is. And they're probably not sure what to do. John Hobbs says, did you hear about the peanut that went to New York? He was assaulted. Ha ha, that's funny, John. I read it out loud because I liked it. And, you know, I appreciate that. That's very generous of you. Uh, let's see here. Al watches, I hope Shazam is better than Ant-Man. I think it is better than Ant-Man. And I got to tell you, I thought Ant-Man wasn't horrible. It was just not what it should be. Uh, I thought it was certainly watchable one time. I couldn't watch it again. I went to see it again, and I was like, this is brutal. Uh, but I thought once it was okay. Uh, but I think Shazam's actually a good movie. Shazam too. Tito says, Grace, please forgive me for insisting. Your fans are really expecting your... It's, I think it's too late to get a Scream 6 spoiler review. I mean, it's so late at this point. I feel b very bad about it. I'm sorry, but it's just so late. It, the movie's been out for a week. Let's see here. Uh, Nacho says, uh, hi, Grace. Margot Robbie presented herself as Harley Quinn at the Oscars. Is she back? Um, I don't... I think that James Gunn really likes Margot Robbie, as we all know, so potentially, but let's see what happens. She's not, I think, back at the moment. Although I wouldn't be surprised if maybe she showed up for a cameo in Waller, maybe, just to hold on to the role. 
Uh, but let's see what uh, Lady Gaga does. Uh, I think the one and only PMG, you mean a Scream 6 spoiler review, because I did review the movie. Uh, we see, I haven't heard anything about Constantine 2 yet. Uh, let's see here. Mr. King Palma says, Hi Grace, I hope one day they make a Johnny Bravo movie. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, let's see here. Alon says, Gun isn't cheaper, he had competition over him. Well, I don't know what you mean by that. And then Irwin says, going to be in New York City le- next month. Which movie theater do you recommend? AMC Lincoln Square? Yes, that is the most famous movie theater in New York City, Irwin. That's a great theater. Uh, Shelly Lee says, hi, can you bless memberships without being a member? I have commitment issues, but love blessings. Ah, oh, Shelly, that's so sweet of you. I'm not sure. If, I think you can gift memberships. Uh, you know, the doll, you see the dollar thing down below? That's where you can gift them. Uh, but I'm not sure if you can do it if you're not a member. But you don't worry about it, Shelly. You do what you feel comfortable with. But I do love getting to see your face there. You look great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mish says, what's for dinner, Grace? My parents, we're not Irish, but my parents have put together an Irish dinner for St. Patrick's Day, although we can't decide on an Ir- um, Irish, Irish movie. They all seem very depressing. <laughs> and we've seen, like, all the happy ones. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing for dinner. Uh, I haven't been over to my parents' place in a while, but we're gonna, they got like Irish soda bread and potato soup and some smoked salmon. We try not to eat too much beef or else we'd have be having corned beef. Let's see here. Um, Elia, what do you mean MCU casting's all over the place? Are they doing that right now? I don't see any. You guys keep tweeting James Gunn with me, isn't it? <laughs> I don't want to fight with anybody. Let's see here. Uh, H. Ty says, why couldn't DC execs have background on HBO Max for a fee or sell it to another streaming service? Or was it really that bad? Have a great weekend and happy St. Patrick's Day and March Madness to you and everyone. Ah, that's so nice of you, H.T. Um, apparently it was really bad. I don't know. I don't know. You know, when you look back at Black Adam, you're like, should they have released this? You know, and they really wanted the tax write down. I don't think it would have been that bad, to be honest with you. I think it would have been nice to have seen it. I thought that Leslie Grace looked like she was doing a nice job. So, and it was so harmful to the people involved with it. I mean, such crap movies have been released over the years. I mean, it couldn't have been that bad. Juan Carlos says, will you do the Disney Plus watch-alongs again? They really help me mentally as something exciting after a work day. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Juan, but I wouldn't be able to do these live streams. You can see how my sleep schedule is getting so messed up with this stuff. i got to get back on track, and having to get up and be camera-ready at 3 a.m. is really hard to do. I wish they would drop these shows at a normal time, and then I could do a watch-along, maybe. Hey, Haunted Autumn. I'm sorry you came in late. Uh, Trisha says, what's in better shape right now, Marvel or DC? Ooh, Marvel, but it's close at this point, but it's close. Johnny says, better filmography, Stanley Kubrick or Quentin Tarantino? Oh, that's fascinating. I'm going to go with Quentin Tarantino because I think Stanley Kubrick's is uneven, although they both are incredible filmmakers. Uh, B. Weeb, I feel so bad. Let me see how next week is. Maybe I'll do it. I'll try. I feel so... I know some of you want it, but it's just so late at this point. Okay. Hey, Nicole Bates. Thanks for joining. Potterhead. Potterhead. Quick Scream 6 spoiler thoughts. I can't just shout out Scream spoilers in this stream. Uh, Mr. Andrew says, I'm not going to Shazam 2 because I want to make a statement. But why? Oh, look at that angry emoji. Why? Why not? Let's see here. Writer Boy says, hi, Grace. Happy to see you here with all. Question. I'm getting closer with finishing my novel. Is it worth it to get a publicist in your opinion? Uh, that's expensive, writer boy. Publicists are very expensive. I think you're better off sending it to publishers and seeing if you can get it published. But congrats, by the way. Writing a book is a big deal. All right, let me finish up on these. We're we're wrapping up, so try to wrap up your questions, okay? Let's see here. Uh, Nicole, you upgraded to BTT Movie Club. Just in time. We're watching The Goonies on Sunday at 5 p.m. Oh, no, 6, 
sometime on Sunday. I forget what time it is. It might be five. I'll remember. I'll remind everybody. Uh, Kayla says, I didn't like The Last of Us. Not enough zombies. I felt duped. I can understand that. I do think it needed more zombies, but it's a very good show. I loved it. Josh says, if Aquaman 2 comes out after The Flash, how does Momoa play Lobo and Aquaman? Yeah, I heard he was still Lobo, even though James Gunn insisted he wasn't. So maybe that Aquaman's going to be done after this? Let's see. I think they don't want to undercut Aquaman 2. YouTube OG says there are way more Flash stands than you know, Grace. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I haven't seen Dungeons and Dragons yet, Allison, but I got my press screening for next week. I'm so excited. And they had a big thing saying concessions will be served. I have to say Paramount runs a really great press screening. I had so much fun at the Scream one. They gave us soda, popcorn, and candy for free and a really great theater. Oh, it was so wonderful. I'm very excited. I hear Dungeons and Dragons is such a good movie. I can't wait to see it. Uh, let's see. World of Devon says, where's Elsa Bloodstone at? Um, I don't know. They've got too many characters. Kevin Foggy has too many characters. I look at B-Weeb. It's not too late for Scream 6 spoilers. Uh, Brother Quantum says, when folks like Gunn get caught in half-truths on Twitter, it's like blood in the water. I agree. I think he never dreamed that Ben Affleck would say, uh, no, I didn't. But he did. Uh, it will be okay, says, any word on what, Brie Larson? Uh, you know what? I don't love Brie Larson in the role, to be honest with you. I would not have cast her. I still feel to this day they should have cast Charlize Theron as Captain Marvel. But I do feel that Brie Larson gets a lot of hate. I think sometimes she invites it upon herself, because she also doesn't know how to handle herself in the public. But I feel it's particularly mean and difficult. And so I don't want to pile on that unless I have, like, concrete proof. So I'm, I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt for the Marvels. I just, I just don't want to do that to that movie. Uh, Welm says, Elizabeth Olsen is back as Scarlet Witch. There's been a contract announcement for four... F Where has that been announced, Welm? Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dolan, always so nice to see you. Happy Friday, Grace. Do you feel that Gunn is going to cast a traditional pick for Superman, or is he going to cast someone that is quirky and gives off gun vibes? You know, that's the question, Dolan, and that'll let us know what's happening here. I hope he casts a traditional pick for Superman. If he gets a quirky Superman, uh, people are going to turn on that movie like that. Jennifer. Oh, hey, Jennifer. Always so nice to see you. Um, uh, hi, Grace. Have you seen Dungeons and Dragons yet? Same thing. Uh, John says, wonderful, Grace. Enjoy your Irish meal and have fun. Ah, thank you. Tom says, hi, Grace. Will you review Dungeons and Dragons? Also, thank you for all your The Last of Us breakdowns. I'm really glad you guys enjoyed them. I had so much fun breaking down that show. And I'm having fun breaking down The Mandalorian, even though nobody cares about that show. Uh, let's see here. Erwin says, do you see Rachel Zegler's comments about Shazam? Yes, I did. I talked about that at the beginning of this live stream. Dory says, I'm always camera, Grace, you're always camera ready. That's very kind of you to say. I appreciate that. Carlos says, uh, why you didn't review Resident Evil Raccoon City? Uh, I can't review everything, uh, and some things just slip past me. Let's see here. Alwatch says, the beef trailer looked so good yesterday. I agree, and someone pointed out that's the director of the upcoming Thunderbolts movie, and that made me feel better about that. 80s model gifted five memberships. Thank you. Paul Milligan says, first comment on a stream. Happy Friday, Grace. What's your single most anticipated movie of the year that's still to come? Hmm. I'm really excited about Mission Impossible. I'm really, really excited. Indiana Jones 5, I gotta say, I'm excited. I'm excited about a lot of stuff. I think there's some really good stuff coming up. Uh, cool Guy also wants to know about Scream C6 spoiler review. Hey, Alberto, welcome back. AG68 says, hey, Grace, think Gunn should do Scooby-Doo 3 with OG Cat? Well, I gotta tell you, if you hear about what James Gunn originally wrote in the Scooby-Doo movie, his first draft that recently came out, it's a lot like the Velma show. And I think that says a lot about still like what, you know, James Gunn's really like. World of Devon, I, don't, I think I got your super chat eventually. Oh, let's see here. One, Jeff says, Rio Juan Carlos, will you consider daytime watch-alongs of Disney Plus in place of a live stream? They're not as popular, so people prefer this. I mean, the, 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 the people have spoken. You have spoken, and you prefer these live streams. So that's, this is what I'm afraid I'm going to be sticking with. Uh, let's see here. Sean M says, it's a feel like Brendan Fraser has become a bit of a charity case. I think it feels that way because of the persona that he's taken on. He really feels like, you know, he's like, so can I have some more, sir? You know, like in uh, Charles Dickens, you know, Oliver Twist, 
That's what he's like in every single interview. Uh, it worked. It got him an Oscar. Uh, but, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, was he always like this? Maybe he's in a really difficult time in his life right now. Um, but, yeah, I think that's why it's coming across that way. Lloyd Lester says, film recommended. Isn't exactly a warm and... Oh, I'm not watching Leprechaun, Lloyd. I saw that when I was looking for Irish-based movies. That's a funny recommendation, though. Uh, look at 80s model, gifting memberships and then welcoming them. Ah, what a sweetheart. Steven says, Megan Coke Bear, now Dungeons and Dragons. A lot of unexpected, well-reviewed movies this year so far. Yeah, it's really fun. It's so great. I'm going to watch Cocaine Bear again this weekend. I'm gonna, my parents waited to watch it until it was going to be streamed. So I'm like, ah, Cocaine Bear, let's do it. Let's see here. I'm not going to pull James, uh, James Gunn's wife. That's not a nice thing to do. Hamid says, thoughts on upcoming Monk movie on Peacock. I never watched Monk, but I do like Tony Shalhoub. Uh, Will Eckhoff says, I'm late, but excited to finally catch a live stream. Did you catch U season four? Absolutely loved it. Uh, love. Oh, so oh, thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words. I didn't watch the final end of you. I, I, I saw what the twist was and I was like, what? And so I scrubbed through and just watched those parts of the second part. Uh, I, I, I'm ashamed to say. And it looked okay, but I'll still keep watching. Uh, Schloke says it's pronounced Schloke like Coke. Thank you. Uh, I, I said Schlock. Uh, love your content and absolutely no need to apologize for the delay. Ah, uh, thank you for saying that. Uh, let's see here. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, yeah, CB, 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 CB. Ah, damn it. All right. B says, what are your Ted Lasso season three thoughts? Um, I think it's good. I couldn't review it because they only gave me four episodes, of, so I have no idea where the season's headed. I thought the first episode was a little annoying, but it gets really good after that. It's a really good show. It's just a, f a fun world to be in, I think. Mm, okay, Jennifer Holland going to be the next Wonder Woman. <laughs> Ready for Avengers Public Wars, fighting in parking lots. Oh, that's pretty funny, Johnny. You're feeling pretty funny today. I like it. Uh, <clears throat> and then World of Devon says, Grace, remember March 2017, Kong Skull Island Power Rangers Logan. That was amazing. That was a, you know, there's been some great marches. You know, I remember Beauty and the Beast came out in March. Captain Marvel came out in March. March is a good month. Uh, it, oh, you're right, David. CB was filmed in Ireland. That's hilarious. Maybe I should talk everybody into watching that. That's, uh, that's hilarious. Maybe I will, David. You might have saved my evening. Uh, hey, April 629, thanks for joining. Clay D says, does the D in DC stand for drama? It seems that it does. It seems that it does. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right, let me do shout outs now. Let me do shout outs. I got everybody's question. I answered everybody's question. Uh, oh, no, wait. Steven says, Brendan Fraser reminds me of Renee Zellweger. Also, add me to the list of people who still want to scream six spoiler review. Ah, uh, thank you. All right, let me just do shout outs. Let me do quick shout outs. Where are you? What are you doing? What are you doing for St. Patty's Day? What's going on with you? And then I got to go film my Shazam thing and then go see that parade. Haunted Autumn is cooking a pizza in Windy, Minnesota. Oh, bye, Zeke the Wise. Uh, Patrick celebrating St. Patrick's Day by having takeout. Love it. Uh, World of Devon says, Luck of the Irish with Eddie Griffith. Uh, Kelsey says, Ready for lunch with pizza sticks. I've never heard of pizza sticks. Oh, Paul Brunel is reading Batman Dark Victory. Oh, that is stunning. You're in for a treat. I'm so glad you're reading that. It's so good. Fidel says, in Memphis on spring break. Woohoo! Well, Logan uh, is in Dallas today, starring in a play this weekend. Oh, congratulations. How exciting. That's wonderful. Uh, Fall 2 says, I work in my office in Philly, having a St. Patty's party tonight. Oh, that's so cool. That's great. Uh, Ivan Montero says, I'm at work cleaning the popcorn machine in the office so we can have some Friday popcorn. Oh, you're a good office, office community member, Ivan. I hope your fellow workers appreciate you. Mish says, ate my dinner while watching the live stream. Oh, I'm happy I could keep you company there. Wade says, are you going to down a few Guinness tonight? Oh, I don't drink, so I will not be downing any Guinness, I'm afraid. Uh, Mr. Magic is vacuuming in Portland, Oregon. Uh, oh, hey, April. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, uh, John says, getting my dorm ultra clean. My girlfriend is coming to visit from Georgia. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. Uh, I hope you two have a wonderful weekend. That's really sweet of you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Marduk says, uh, was on Zoom for the X-Men 60th anniversary yesterday and loved it. Lots of news about X-Men 97. Oh, that's great. I would love the X-Men to be great again. 
Hey, Logan, thank you for gifting a membership. Oh, I can see your photo very well there. You look cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Shlok said, just watched Crazy Rich Asians, having my favorite Indian dish right now. That sounds like a good time. B. Weeb says, waiting for the work, the work clock out to see a St. Patty's techno show. And what is that, Cincinnati? That sounds like an evening, B. Weeb. That sounds like an evening. J. King says, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. While Joseph Dennis is watching from Canada, making some goulash. Oh, goulash is tasty. My Eastern European roots love it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Claude G says, cooking dinner for my family, by the way. Oh, it's pronounced Clay D, like clay that you make pots out of. Oh, thank you, Clay D. Uh, so nice, and thank you for helping me pronounce your name correctly. Keith says, snowing a lot here in Canada. So great to see you enjoying uh, being the world in the world of Star Wars. Yes, I'm a big, I love Star Wars. I finally clicked for me. I get Star Wars now. Just Josh says, watching Vanderpump Rules after this. Uh, making soup. Soup is delicious. While Dolan says, enjoying a Carvel ice cream cone while finishing up my work day. Oh, that sounds so great. Uh, and Elias says, check out my rural life, Grace. What's my rural life? Is that for St. Patrick's Day? Bye, Haunted Autumn. Oh, look, recognize just, he says, celebrating six, where did that go? Recog uh, celebrating six months sober and 10 years since coming out. Wow, also my half birthday. What a day for you. That's incredible. You know, somebody else recently shared their own journey with sobriety recently, and that was really moving. And I know the number of people here are going through the same thing. So that's really great to uh, shout, do these shout outs to cheer everybody on and so we can cheer each other on. But that's great, Justy. Congratulations. And you're, you know, congratulations for being your best self and being you. World of Devon says, in Fresno, excited about Family Guy being renewed for two more seasons. Yeah, it never gets old. I love that show. Jay is going to Disneyland tonight. Oh, have a good time. Dane O'Leary says, I made it. Hi, Dane. Uh, Cole says, thoughts on Tarantino's final movie, The Movie Critic. Uh, someone mentioned that earlier, Cole, and that Meryl Streep might be cast. And I said that sounded like an incredible, incredible film. Mesh says, I'm about to watch the last two episodes of WandaVision again tonight. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, let's see here. What else? Uh, Dancing Dog 60 says, I'll be staying far away from the parade in Boston on St. Patrick's Day, but I'll be watching something fun on Sunday. Oh, I hope, you, I hope you'll be watching the Goonies with us. I hope that's what you mean. Uh, yeah, the parade can be pretty crazy, but, you know, you might want to check it out a little bit. Oh, Ilya says, that's a cooking channel. Oh, thank you. I will check that out. Last night I bought a cooking, I bought a TikTok cookbook last night. You shouldn't buy stuff in the middle of the night. I did it. I spent $30 on Stealth Health Cookbook, which is uh, uh, high protein, low fat, low carb meals. And I, I, was, I saw one of his, and his, the recipe that I liked on Instagram wasn't the, in the cookbook. I was so upset about that after I paid $30. But I thought that was pretty funny. But yeah, it happens. Who here hasn't bought something late at night while online? <laughs> I was like, darn it. Darn it. Uh, who asked me that? Um, that was an interesting question. World of Devon says, Grace, do you go to church? I do not go to church. Um, it's hard in New York City, to be honest with you. But, uh, and I'm not, I don't really belong to, I celebrate Christmas, but I really wouldn't categorize myself in any particular religion. But I, I do say a prayer every night, and I do, I do believe in that's in a greater power to some degree. That's a tough question. But, um, yeah, I do, and I do, I will say that I do miss the church as a way to bring communities together. But, you know, the church really inflicted a lot of self-hurt with some scandals that they should not have covered up. So, but I, I do, when I look at movies like Pollyanna and I see how the church used to bring communities together every Sunday, I think to myself, that's really beautiful. And, I mean, of course, a lot of religious organizations do that. And so I think that's really wonderful, but it's really sad that uh, there's a lot of it's been um, twisted by the very organizations themselves. Because it's a real loss, I think, to the community. It's sad. Yeah, Home Alone, you're right, Paul. That Home Alone scene is beautiful. But you know, I, I think, you know, I don't really know if that even would exist. And now you're like, don't go into that church, Kevin, you're a kid. Uh, TJ Williams says, come upstate to upstate New York to my church. They're great people, I love them. We also celebrate Christmas. That's funny, TJ Williams. That makes me so happy that you have a great community church. That's, that's really nice. That's great. I'm glad it still exists for some people. Uh, oh, Shlok, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, I always feel bad asking you to like and, uh, you know, say stuff about the video because, you know, I just want you to enjoy it, you know? 
Uh, but if you are so inclined, it would be very nice for you to like and subscribe if you, if you felt like it. Uh, all right, I better get going. I got to film this Shazam review, and then I got to get out so I can uh, watch the parade a little bit. Okay, everybody, happy St. Patrick's Day. Top of the morning to you. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Uh, the Shazam spoiler review will go up tomorrow, but I'll also discuss the end credit scenes in it. Sunday will be movie math and the watch along, and then the week starts again. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day. Bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.